Hello, welcome. I hope everyone is in good spirits today. I wanted to do a little update Q&A slash video. A, because I have no vlogs right now. If you watched my last video, you would have seen how hectic my April was. And so I just needed some time to like live my life without documenting things. And it was a nice little like two week break. Um, and also because I've been getting very similar questions on a lot of my platforms, either YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, because I talk about so many different things. And I feel like it's probably just easier if I make one video and answer all the questions so I can have them all here. In case anyone asks, I could just direct them to this video. I'm currently in the car right now because I'm about to head out, like after I finish this video, to an office to edit and just like get a bunch of work done. We are dealing again <laughs> with a tummy bug. I feel like this year has been literally the year that was like, I'm gonna test you, Alex, because I've been facing every single phobia, fear, things that trigger my anxiety. It's been all this year, but I am really proud of myself for like how I've been handling things. I feel like I've come such a long way because I did not used to be like this at all. And I'm talking about like even six months ago, I wouldn't, I don't think I would have been able to handle things. So yeah, I feel like I'm in a really good place now with given what's been going on and I feel like I can kind of tackle the world a little bit. I have been doing some more individual therapy which has been actually really nice. There's been things that have kind of recently come up in my life and my personal life that um, I, I don't think I'll ever talk about publicly but it has really like thrown me for a loop and I think being able to talk to someone that I really trust has been helping me so much. I had a couples therapist with my husband that we had been seeing for five years straight. We started originally, I feel like I'm a broken record with this, but in case you don't know the story, we started originally just for how for how we could communicate. And then we just continued with her afterwards because anytime we would go through something together as a couple that was hard for us and we just didn't know how to deal with it, we'd be able to talk to her about it and it would help us navigate like different situations in our life. Even if we were on the same page with it, it was just kind of like, how do we navigate this? Or even going through um, COVID, the beginning of COVID when I was pregnant and then giving birth alone and then postpartum and in, in lockdown for a year, that was really hard for the two of us. So we were able to have our couples therapist. Um, but you know, it was kind of got to the point now where we felt like we didn't really need it as much. And I felt like I really needed individual, like I needed to work on certain things that didn't involve my husband. So that has been hard because I'm dealing with things from my past, like past trauma, childhood trauma, things that I'm trying to heal my inner child in a way. And I've been going to therapy as well as talking to spiritualists and just really focusing on my mental health. That has been a really big challenge for myself this year, along with my physical health. I'll get into that in a second. I want to talk about um, spirituality religion because it's a huge topic right now people are asking me all the time about this uh breast reduction and just etc i got a lot of questions from you guys so i'm gonna get to that but i want to thank today's sponsor which is better help and i thought that was fitting for today because i'm gonna start with talking about therapy i actually found my therapist through better help um, because i've been working with them for so long i was able to connect with somebody Originally, I had someone for postpartum because if you guys don't know what BetterHelp is, I'm sure you have heard of it because it is everywhere. But I've had really uh, like a really good experience using it, and I know a couple of my friends have as well. You can basically connect with a therapist from anywhere in the world, so it is all virtual online. You can do it from the comfort of your own home, which I personally enjoy because I used to do therapy in person, and although I like it, it's intimate. When quarantine hit and lockdown hit, and being able to just do it when I can because I'm so busy has actually taken off a lot of like the mental toll that I had of like, oh, I have to drive 30 minutes to my therapist and then sit there for an hour and then drive in traffic on the way home. It's like now I could just do it when I'm comfortable. I usually do it after my son goes to bed. So it's like a good hour of like relax time. Um, if it is going to be more intense session, I try to book it earlier in the day, like during his nap or something, because I, I might need some time to like process it throughout the day. But they have so many therapists for all different types of work. You just fill out a questionnaire at the beginning when you sign up and essentially it will match you with someone 
based off of your answers to the questions with what you're looking for. So like I said originally, I was doing for postpartum because I was terrified about having postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression. And then I actually switched therapists because I wanted someone who could deal a little bit more with like anxiety and phobias. It's not exposure therapy, but it's someone who kind of specializes in that. So don't ever be shy to let the therapist that you're connected with know if you're feeling it or not. I really think therapy should be a two-way street. You need to connect with the person because you're going to be telling them like your deepest, darkest thoughts and you want to feel comfortable and there is no shame in being honest. They will not take offense to it. They are licensed professionals and they will try to as best as they can help you find someone that you com are comfortable with what i also like is you can talk to your therapist any way you feel comfortable you can do it through video or you could do it over the phone um, they have over 30,000 licensed therapists worldwide like i said you could do it from the comfort of your own home um, or even like in your car or something like that, which I think is really helpful. And yeah, if you are curious, I will have a link listed down below in the description, but I'll have it here as well. Just go to betterhelp.com slash Chintomo to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash Chintomo, which is my last name, C-E-N-T-O-M-O. You can get 10% off your first month. Like I said, again, I've had a really good experience using this website. I continue to use it. I really like my therapist. But yeah, I guess I'll talk a little bit about um, my mental health. My car's making weird noise. What is going on? Um, if you've been keeping up with what's been going on, we struggled or we are currently struggling with infertility, secondary, unexplained infertility. When we started trying for baby number two, it was taking a while and we were like, okay, that's normal. Um, and then it just like wasn't happening and so after a year we had gone to see specialists did a bunch of tests with different doctors they all came back the same there's no issue i actually have like my fertility is actually better than most people my age and same with dan so there's just like literally no reason um i do know like the shape of my uterus is higher risk of miscarriage but it doesn't stop like it doesn't stop me from getting pregnant so um i have had a few chemical pregnancies i did have one miscarriage and it's just been like a really really tough year and so Dan and I, once we had done IVF and it didn't work with that first embryo, we were kind of like, okay, let's take a break because it was just so much on my mental health, so much on his mental health too, because even though he was upset that it wasn't like happening that, and we had pictured our lives a certain way, at the end of the day, Dan is the type of person that like, he's okay with the cards that he's dealt with. Like he'll always find the positive in things and he'll always be okay with stuff. Whereas I really linger on things when I don't have control over them and it really stresses me out and I felt like I was failing him I felt like I was failing myself I, f I felt like I was failing my family and failing Arkham because like I want him to have a sibling I know he wants a sibling he keeps asking for a baby in my belly um, a lot of my friends that have a, a kid are already having their second and so he's seeing that and he like his friends are having siblings and they're talking about it and so he's really starting to get to that and I I just felt like a huge um failure honestly and so I was like okay you know what like I can't keep living this way I need to talk to somebody about this <laughs> like as much as I could talk to my husband talk to my friends and family it's not the same what can I do to make this better for myself like other than just journaling and trying to accept things and do readings and stuff so I have been working with a therapist for that which has been really nice and she's also really helped with a lot of my phobias but a big thing was my physical health so I have a very rocky re relationship with like diet dieting exercising food body image like throughout my whole life it's been very apparent i've struggled with an ed in the past um and just body image issues when i got pregnant i fell in love with my body i know a lot of people say like if you are enjoying your pregnancy, you're just a liar. But like, I literally loved being pregnant. I did barely felt sick. I was a little nauseous for like two weeks. That's it. I never got sick. I felt literally amazing. Like I loved being pregnant, even though I was like breaking out like crazy and I gained a ton of weight and I like was so swollen and I couldn't do anything and I was uncomfortable. I freaking loved it. And then when I gave birth, I loved my body even more because I saw what it went through and I saw what it was able to do and I was like, wow, I, I have never felt this kind of love towards myself before and I was just radiating this self-confidence and it lasted a while. Um, 
I always made sure I did blood work with my doctors to make sure I was healthy because that was always a concern of mine. I always went, wanted to make sure my bloods were healthy, my insides were healthy because you can look a certain way on the outside and be completely different on the inside. So I always was making sure that I was exercising enough for me and eating properly enough for me and making sure I was healthy physically and everything was always good. Um, the only thing is when I we started trying for a baby, I wanted to do a bit more blood work because I was having these weird heart palpitations. And my doctor just mentioned like, maybe really get into the habit of like exercising more, not for like a physical appearance, but just to feel better because it helps all the way around um, do more cardio. And so I was like, okay. And that's when I got into cycling because it wasn't hard on my joints and I love cycling and I really got into it. Um, and then when we started trying and it just wasn't working and my mental health just went like, like I said, it was really hard to keep up physically because I was just in a really big slump and I felt really sorry for myself to put it I can't put it any other way. Like I felt sorry for myself. I got to a place at the beginning of this year where I was like, well, I literally tried everything I could to get pregnant and it didn't work. Not that I'm giving up, but I'm kind of like, I just can't live my life like this anymore. It's just not okay. So what I decided to do was start really focusing on being healthy with my diet and with my exercise, like for myself in a healthy way where it doesn't become scary because it's a very slippery, a slippery slope for me. I, in 2017, lost 20 pounds in a few months because I was eating very, a very well-balanced diet. I wasn't, um, what's it called? I wasn't restricting myself. Everything was in moderation and I was exercising every single morning and I felt really, really good. Like I had felt, I hadn't felt that good in so long and I kind of want to get back to that mindset. And it's, just taking me longer now because I'm much older than 27 years old, you know, or 26 years old. I'm in my 30s now. I had a baby. My body has gone through a lot. I have still some scar tissue and stuff from my cesarean. So it's, it's not the same. And I have to realize that like, even if I'm eating the same and exercising the same as I was back then, my body's not going to do the same thing as it did back then. Sorry, there's a plane. And that's okay. It is okay to age and to get older and for your body to uh, not do the things that you want it to do. But it just takes time. And so every time I catch myself, like telling myself internally, oh, you're working out so good, Alex. Like you're gonna look so good. I'm like, no, this is not about looks. It's literally about my health. It's about my well being. It's about extending my life as much as I can with the control that I have. And that's, that's it. And the hardest part for me is diet because I have a very, very unhealthy relationship with food throughout my whole life. It's been really hard and I, I'm still kind of working it out where I'm eating in moderation, eating a balanced diet. So I'm getting all my proteins, I'm getting all my veggies, everything that I need that is good for me and my body and it's going to fuel me. And then also allowing myself to indulge, but not overdo it because... I don't want to become unhealthy. I don't want to I don't want to get to a point where I go to do my blood work and my doctor is like, "Oh, you have high cholesterol or you have this." So I'm I'm trying to keep it in a good area and I feel like now I'm in a good place. Like what I do is during the week, I eat a lot of high protein fibers, lots of veggies, things that I'm going to like feel so good after I eat them that are just like so I don't want to see healthy because like food is fuel and it doesn't matter. It's, it's good for your body. And then on weekends, what I do is I allow myself to go for dinners. I allow myself to eat whatever I want and just not like think twice about it because I need to have a little bit of structure in my life in order for my mental health to like be okay and to not feel like it's all over the place. And so Dan and I have recently been cooking every single thing in our fridge. Like we will go for dinner on weekends, but like weekdays it's we cook every single meal. We use up all of the food in our fridge. We try not to have any food go bad. We eat our leftovers the next day as like a lunch or something or even for dinner. And it's been really helpful, honestly. And we're saving a lot of money. So like I could have gone to a drive through right now and got a, a coffee or something, but I was like, no, I have stuff at home. I'll make it. And that's what I'm going to have. So that's that. Um, and yeah, I, I feel, I feel really good. Um, I don't weigh myself 
it's not about the scale because most of us are aware that the number on the scale means absolutely nothing. Okay, so spirituality uh, and religion, I guess it all goes together. I have been recently talking a little bit more about my experience with this spiritualist here in Montreal. She's technically a medium. She, but like her, her whole purpose is to help you achieve like your highest self. So whether you believe in God or the universe or just even yourself, like she kind of just helps you feel good in whatever situation you're in right now and kind of like a life coach almost. It was a really good session I had with her and she does, she is able to connect with past loved ones. And for a long time, I didn't really believe in that stuff because I was like, I don't know. I'm very like, I get I get in my head a lot and I'm like, I need evidence. I need proof, blah, blah, blah. But then there's like also so many things in the world that we can't explain and they just are. So I'm like, well, just because you can't explain it with fact, how do I know it's not a thing? Also, it helps me feel better. So if it helps me feel better, what's wrong with that, you know? And there's no harm in it. It's not hurting anyone. <laughs> so... She was able to connect with my grandfather, with my aunt, and with my grandmother who passed away. One of my grandfathers she didn't connect with, so I don't really know the reason for that. I th she explained it to me. I think it's because, like, he passed, like, he's crossed over and, like, things are, I don't know. He just wasn't close to me, but I had other spirits that were close to me, and she was really nice about it. I'm not going to go into details because, again, it was just, like, a very personal process. I was not raised religious at all. My mom technically is Jewish. She also was not raised religious. Lots of reasons that I've talked about previously. So she doesn't really know much about the Jewish religion. I mean, she knows basics, but like not in detail. She never did like Shabbat. She never did any of that stuff. And growing up, I always knew that my mom's side of the family came from like Jewish Ashkenazi Jews, but like no one was practicing. My dad's side of the family... Uh, they're all Catholic and a lot of them did practice like my no-no went to church every single Sunday and he did you know He did all the stuff and my dad would take me once in a while just to explain it to me But he always said I like I want you to make the decision with what you're interested in and then I'll answer any questions You have and kind of like let you decide with what you want, but my mom don't get mad at me for saying this I love you, but she's not spiritual she just, she's not. Um, maybe a little bit now, maybe she's getting to be more spiritual, but she, she's the kind of person, like, she needs facts and evidence, and she's always said throughout my whole life, like, when you die, you're just dead, you're in the ground. That's just, like, how it is. And that's fine, like, people are allowed to believe in what they believe in. My dad definitely believes in heaven, he believes in spirits, he believes that your soul, you know, lives on, and you live on through people, and, and I always kind of was in the middle on one hand i was thinking i really believe my mom on the other hand i liked the way my dad thought because it brought me a lot more peace than to just think that like you die and that's that and that's that like that scared me so i always tended to want to believe my dad more and believe in that kind of stuff but then there was a part of me that was like but i think my mom is right so i just always felt conflicted with it so now i'm in a place where i've been trying to figure out figure out my own spirituality and my own what I want to believe in for myself without having any knowledge or education on any kind of religion or spirituality or anything like that. So I feel like I'm in a learning metamorphosis phase where I am kind of coming into myself and allowing myself to be a lot more open to different kinds of spirituality and lean into that more. And it's actually been really nice. I feel like it's helped bring me a lot of peace. So that's been good. And who knows, maybe in a few years I'll think differently but for right now I it's kind of how I'm feeling the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, breast reduction because this is something I have talked about here and there on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram but I recently have really been like you know what I kind of want to go in for some cons consultations and just see what my options are if you don't have a big chest like naturally it's really hard to explain why it is so difficult because people who have smaller boobs that want bigger boobs they look at that and they're like wow you're so blessed you were just born that way getting a boob job is not the same thing as having naturally big boobs because it's a lot lighter not saying it's light but like having breast implants is not the same thing as having like huge real knockers that are full of like glands and fat and it's really challenging i was never small chested i think i was a 36c 
like full C. And I always loved my boobs because they, I could wear shirts that were open back. I didn't have to wear a bra. They were perky. They were cute. Um, they were like a good, nice handful. Like I just, it was never anything I was self-conscious about. I always loved my chest. When I got pregnant and they got huge, I was like, whoa, it's kind of ridiculous. I didn't realize my boobs could get so big. And then when I was breastfeeding and they would like fill up with milk and then shrink and fill up with milk, it was just, oh, it was a lot. And then they started to sag a lot and then I would sweat underneath them. This is kind of TMI and it would just like stink and I would get acne and it was really uncomfortable. And I could never find bras that fit me properly because they started to really sag and like the tops of them, it's almost like just empty skin. Like there's no gland, there's nothing. It's just empty. So when I would wear a nice bra, it would still be saggy on top. Like I don't know how to explain it. I always said, you know, I'll think about this when I'm done having kids. But I don't know if we're ever going to have a second kid. And so I was like, well, what if I just had a reduction now? And then if I get pregnant again, then I, I deal with it later. There are so many women that get breast reductions before they have any children. And then they'll just do a little bit after they're done having kids as well. So I was talking to a lot of people on Instagram about this because there's a lot of women that have had breast reductions and they have said it is actually life changing. Those are the words that most people say, it changed my life and I wish I did it sooner. My other concern is will I be able to breastfeed afterwards? I could barely breastfeed <laughs> with my son. So it's not the end of the world if I can't breastfeed. It's not like the biggest concern for me, honestly. Um, I'm okay with giving formula. For me, fed is best. I would obviously love to give colostrum at the beginning, at the beginning but it's, it's really, to me, it's not not the end of the world. What is the end of the world is the back problems that I'm getting from my chest being heavy and weighing me down. It's something I'm not used to. And I literally have shoulder and back problems from like the weight. They're so heavy and exercising is hard. Like I found certain bras that are okay if I do Pilates or yoga or whatever. But as soon as I run and I love to run, it is hard. They like, I'm not even joking guys. Like they almost hit my face. And I wear two bras to try to keep them in place. And even then, like, they'll poke out underneath. And day to day, it's not the end of the world. I could live like this, no problem. But I miss wearing tank tops with no bra. I miss wearing open back dresses. I miss wearing things where I don't have to wear a bra for it. And I absolutely do not like the over-sexualization -sexual of my boobs. When they are literally there here because they were meant to feed my child. If I wear any kind of top that's lower cut or there's all these cute summer tops that are a bit more like they wouldn't be scandalous on someone with small boobs but because I have a bigger chest, I feel uncomfortable in public. People stare, there'll be comments and it's just like one of those things that it's so over sexualized and I hate that so much. I hate that I can't go for a run in a sports bra outside when it's 30 plus degrees Celsius without people staring. I just don't like it. So I decided that I'm going to go in for different consultations with different surgeons in my area, see what they have to say, see what my options are, see what they recommend if I, if I should wait until I have another kid or if I should just do it now, make my life happier now, and don't just keep doing the waiting because what if or what if that or what if this. I'm going to live my life. And if I get pregnant, then I get pregnant and I will deal with it again. I just, I made the decision, the decision already, like internally that I'm going to do it. So I've reached out to a few different surgeons. I will document it if you're curious. So let me know in the comments if this is something that you would want to see the process of. I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm doing it. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing something for yourself. If you want to get breast implants, if you want to do a mommy makeover, or if you, whatever you want to do, as long as like you do your research and you know it's for yourself and that's that, go for it. Cause who the fuck cares? You know, like at the end of the day, it's your life and your body. It should not matter. Yes, people that are online that have platforms, there is a little bit of a responsibility to make sure that doing things in a healthy way that is not, you know, especially based off of your audience. But I also think that like, it is okay. It is okay to get some stuff done. It is okay if you want to get some Botox. It is okay to dye your hair, to self tan, to wear make, like do whatever makes you happy. In the end, that is all that matters. 
And I feel like I'm in a place now where I am not doing things for other people anymore. I'm not doing stuff to make other people happy. I'm doing things that make me happy. And if that upsets someone else, that's not on me because this is my life and my channel. And I have to remind myself of that sometimes because sometimes I forget. Sometimes I feel like I'm doing things to please the audience instead of just why I started my channel was to share the things that make me happy and that and then people that support that will support it and if they don't support it then they don't support it but at the end of the day like it's my life so I guess that's the update this is kind of a long video oh there was one extra thing people were asking about updates on the house we put a pause on the basement because of the month of April it was so intense and then we were going to start this week and Dan got the stomach flu so now we're waiting until next week but we do have some like small updates we're going to have an electrician come in to put the wiring and then once that is done and like set up we'll be able to put up the gyp rock and like do the walls you'll be able to seal the whole process buying floors furniture all that fun stuff so stay tuned I'm very excited about that another question is do we see ourselves living here forever no, this is not a forever home. It is a perfect, like, first home. I think it's so amazing. It's small. It's not huge. Um, but it's perfect for what we need. We have one kid, you know? It's a three-bedroom. Upstairs will be four-bedroom when we do the ba uh, the basement. So currently three-bedroom, two-bathroom, and it's plenty of space. It is a lot with two dogs, I have to be honest, because we have, like, open concept downstairs. But once we have our basement, we're going to have so much extra space. We have a huge yard. I just don't see it being an issue, honestly. And then when my kids are older, like early teens, that's, I think, the time frame that we want to build our own house or buy a really old home and not flip it, but like fix it up and renovate it ourselves. I think that would be such a fun project. Dan and I absolutely love doing this stuff. So that's kind of the plan for now and we'll see where the future brings us but I hope you enjoyed this video I hope that whatever you're going through just keep reminding yourself that it is a season in life things come and go life there's ebb and flow with everything the waves go up and down I could say a different a million different things towards this but life sucks sometimes and then it gets better and then it sucks again and then it gets better and when it sucks we just gotta you know make the best of what we can and then when it's good, appreciate the good times and know that it will always come and go. It is okay to ask for help. I will see you all in the next video. I have my best friend's wedding coming up this weekend and then um, a few fun things planned that I will definitely vlog. And I'm going on my first solo trip ever on a plane and I will definitely document that. But I love you guys and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.